Now on to my first guest on the show, this gentleman, um, he is a booming actor. He was actually nominated for 2018's Upcoming Actor of the Year. He is a trainer. He also stars on Tyler Perry's Sisters. You can see that, check your local listings. And he is doing big things in the industry. My good friend, Mr. Ty Edwards, welcome to the show. What's going on, man? man. You know what I mean, What's going on? It is mighty good to see you. Man. Now, welcome. Now, you are doing such big things in the industry. How long have you been doing, Ty? I've been in the business 24 years now. 24 years. So, from the streets of Chicago, in there, did you straight here? <laughs> Uh, no, unfortunately, it was a journey. It was a journey. In fact, you were a part of that journey for a brief period. You know what I'm saying? We grew up on the same on the same block in the same area, Terrytown. I mean, we we were there. You know, things that they're talking about, them, you know, in the movies and in, in these rap videos, we actually did. You know, but we don't look like our story. That's correct. Hey, Dad, speaking of story, you have a very, very interesting story. Now, um, first, before we talk about the story, um, can you agree with the five points I was discussing? Absolutely. Especially the one in the end when you say, you know, a moment of pleasure can be a, a lifetime of hell. Definitely. Now, um, Ty has um, a story that's on YouTube, you can see, where you actually um, live with false accusations. Is that correct? That's correct. Tell us a bit about it. Uh, I was in a relationship like most of us. Uh, I was I was actually married, and you know, no relationship is easy. It takes work, and unfortunately, sometimes you may have to separate. And I did all the right things to do as far as a husband or a person that would just want to have a relationship. At the time, I had a child, and I just said, "Look, I just want to take care of my child and, and, and move on with life." But sometimes people have different agendas. They want to let you go, or just get envious. And unfortunately, that was my situation. She got envious. Yeah, she got she got jealous. She got upset that I was leaving, and um, her and her mom conspired to say that I misappropriated myself and my daughter. Your own daughter. Yeah, my own daughter. And what did that lead to? Did they? How far did it take? It? Well, before it started out as an accusation, and when the accusation uh, came about, I was still in a relationship. So naturally, when that came about, you know, when the smoke cleared and they found out that I had other plans, immediately it was this, and then I was like, you know, I definitely have to end this in, in the relationship. There was no coming back from that. Mm -hmm. So um, as I was moving on, you know, just the, the, the thought of it, trying to live life after that, getting a job, it, it, it just snowballed, you know, because now it was on my record, it was brought into the floor, I had to, I had to vindicate myself and I had people cooperate my character. I mean, I had, I, I owned a daycare center at the time of, you know, the marriage. So it, it, it was crazy. Wait, wait, Ty, now, now back up for a minute. Now, this is, this is some very serious stuff. Yeah. So now, initially, when it first came to you, you were immediately arrested? Well, no, no, no. Uh, the, the arrest didn't come until 2012. Uh, it was just an accusation which pretty much by Texas Texas standards, because I lived in Texas at the time, their laws are totally crazy when it comes to this. So it's, it's like no tolerance? It's, it's, it's zero tolerance. I mean, everything's in the favor of the woman or the wife. If you have to be married to have any type of control or any type of say, mm -hmm. as far as the father goes. But no, uh, it was all the allegation that, you know, that pretty much snowballed and it prevented me from getting employment. I'm an actor now because I, I couldn't find a job. It was just hard for me to get my life back together. And I went back on the only thing that I knew that I was really good at, modeling and acting. I said, if I'm going to do it, I need to go where it needs to be done. I still have my youth, and I just took a chance. But no, it really impacted my life. But um, it was it was not until 2011, I went down to go visit my daughter. And she's much older, 10. And you would think that, look, you know I haven't done anything like that to you. And me being a good father, wanting to be into her life, let her know, look, you know, those accusations, whatever it is, I want to be in your life. I'm out here doing all these things. I don't want her to think that I'm doing all this and I'm thinking of her. So the first opportunity I get to actually spend time with her, because I was very limited as well when I was in a relationship or afterwards, I go back and I see her and I had this amazing time. Posting it on Facebook and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, yo, you know, I'm with my baby. And I get back and all of a sudden I get hauled off in handcuffs. Wow. Now, now there's something on YouTube that depicts the whole story. Yeah. And it's like about a 12 minute, uh, almost 12 minute and 30 second movie. It's very, very interesting. You don't want to miss it. But now, is that how it played out? Yeah. In this entire movie? Yeah. 
unfortunately. But how were you exonerated from this? Well, it, first of all, I want to give thanks and praise to God. I mean, because the whole, the whole time, his hand was on me in that situation. You know, because again, I was innocent. And there's a lot of innocent men in there fighting cases that, you know, they, they would meet a young woman uh, at a bar that looked and appeared older than what they were. And then they go home, do what grown folks do, and all of a sudden, that girl was 15 or 16 whoa, years old. Whoa. Exactly. But I was in there for just vindictiveness, you know. And um, it was just, it, 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 it was crazy. I got exonerated. After spending three weeks of hell, I almost lost my life in, in, in L.A. County. They almost killed me in prison. Now, now who would be the inmates or guards? They, well, I had fights with the inmates, but primarily this would have been the attack with the sheriffs and the deputies and the guards, yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, for those who just tuned in, we are talking to the actor, um, the uh, trainer, as well as the bodybuilder, uh, Ty Edwards, who stars on um, Sisters. And he's telling his story and the story about how he was falsely accused um, for misappropriating with his daughter. Now, um, first of all, we all know that when you go to jail, the one of the least popular people in prison or jail is a sexual offender. A pedophile, especially a pedophile. And that's worse than a snitch. Yeah, absolutely. So when word got out that you were in here for that, how often did you have to fight? I fought every day. I fought every day because uh, outside of just dealing with the deputies and the sheriffs, you had the inmates. So, you know, um, you have the gangs. So it was a pick a side. It's, it's all about survival when you're in there. And being that the Twin Towers is pretty much the number two, it's two county jails that you don't ever want to go to. That's Dallas County and that's LA County. Where's and I went to both. The, yeah, yeah. Wow. And Cook County, we both know Cook County is, is crazy. But I had to spend two of my, I mean, my whole duration in two of the worst counties. Now, now explain why um, Dallas is so bad, the county. It's just, I mean, overpopulated. You know, I mean, you have people that aren't supposed to be in the jail or in the prison local. You need to be shipped abroad for whatever reason they are. I mean, it's just, the jail is, it's a madhouse. It's not designed for rehabilitation, especially if you're going in there and you didn't do anything to deserve that. Wow, wow. So how did you, how were you able to deal with that knowing that you're a good father, a good husband, a decent man, and you somewhere that you absolutely had no business with? You know what? I take no credit for that. That's, that, that, that came from somebody bigger, more powerful than me. I still ask myself those questions. How was I able to endure that? The only thing that I can honestly say though, had it not been for my upbringing, Chicago will mold you into something. You know, we had to live with, we had to normalize dysfunction. You know, I mean, being, being introduced to a gun at eight, nine, ten years old was yeah. regular stuff for me. Right. So your first crack rock at 11 was, eat, that was a rite of passage. Mm -hmm. Then you go and gang bang. Mm -hmm. You know, which one are you? Black Beast Stone, you know, Gangster Disciple. It, it, it was going to happen. Exactly. You know, so having gone through that, living in those streets and knowing how to navigate that, not saying it prepares you for prison, but it lets you know and makes you aware of those type of environments when you actually remember. And actually being built like crap. Yeah. Well, well, you know, well, well, yeah. man, I mean, but you know what? Even in that, man, I mean, yes, it helps. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm dealing with numbers. You know, I'm dealing with repetitive arguments and altercations every day. Picking with you. Every day, you know, if it's not by the end date, because again, they're thinking I'm like them. I'm not supposed to be in here with you. I'm just disgusted at what you did and me having to be in here with you. Yeah, I had a lot of emotions. Cause you know, it's like, I'm in a foreign land. I'm not supposed to be here. Correct, correct. And then I have to protect myself just to be in the environment until this blows over, if it blows over. Now, 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 now um, something very interesting though, on that video that you definitely have to watch it, it's on YouTube. Um, just type in Ty Edwards and you'll see it's a, a documentary. Very, very interesting. Now, one thing that was so interesting about it as well is that the guy in there, you know, he believed you. Yeah. But the fact is that most guys will say, I oh, everybody say he innocent. Right. Well, why did he believe you? Well, you know what? That, 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 that first documentary was kind of like a, a reenactment. You know, a good friend of mine, Calvin Muscle. But again, you know, he, he's, his, his claim to fame was because he was an ex-former fella. So we just collaborated on that to get my story out. But it... When you are in that environment, you're going to get some people, OGs, people that have been there. 
and, and, and have seen that type of element and really know what the element is. You know, and like I said, you know, it wasn't by the grace of God because every step of the way, although the accusation said I was this monster, the people that I, it, it was always one person that says, you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. I know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. That don't, oh, hell no. And that, 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 that there kept me sane because when you're in that environment or when you're in a situation to where it's like nowhere you can go, you, you start to believe. You start to believe that. Oh no, I know I didn't do that, but I'm like I'm waking up to these people. Like, did I really like did I really do this? Right, right, right. But no, Ty, um one thing that's very interesting about it is that people are probably ask you right now, I'm you, yeah. why when you when you were accused of something like that, mm -hmm. why didn't you just immediately PC up? Protective custody. No. I couldn't get it. When I first arrived, and it was crazy because when I first got on the scene, you know, you go through these different stages of as, as far as intake. So when I got to the first level, the like first guy was like, hey, you know, let me pull you up. And then when he pulled my information up, he said, oh my God. And he, really, he looked at me and said, man, oh man, this don't like something you do. He said, first of all, let me see if I can get you. I didn't even know what PC was. You know, so he went in and he said, let me see if I can put you in PC. He did the work, whatever. And I guess I, get, I couldn't get access or so I, I wasn't eligible. So at that point, he said, listen, whatever you do, don't tell no one what you're in here. But they always find out though. I didn't know that to the next level of intake because when you get there, they give you a band. And every band is, 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 is color coded for the crime. So everybody knew I was in there for sexual. Oh, wow. So that's when it hit the fan because I was like, well, the advice he just gave me is just out the door because I'm a walking target right for right. inmates mm -hmm. and sheriffs and deputies alike. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. Um, listen to this story. This man has been through so much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back from this commercial break, I have a question for Ty. I want to find out, Ty, how were you able to adjust once you got out? We'll be right back. Right after this. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. We are talking to the gentleman and the scholar, my good buddy, uh, Ty Edwards, who's been doing big, big things in industry. And he did not let a setback in life, a major setback, stop him from being a star. So now, in, in what year, Ty, did you uh, get exonerated and take off from work? It happened in 2012, and it happened. Uh, I got, the exoneration came late. It happened in February 2012, so I got exonerated maybe like five months later. Probably felt like five yeah. years. Huh? Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I mean, it, it took me five months to come back. Wow. And when I came back, I came back. From that one. Now, so nobody would want to hire you? Or? No, no. I mean, I guess initially, the 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 the, the allegation and the, and the accusation started in Texas. So I couldn't get employment in 2000, you know, I mean, 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. Like when they, when, when they came in and got me just off the cuff, off the line, and I had to, I, I was just starting a brand new job. And here it is, I'm going back and forth with the mother on the phone, with the mother's mother on the phone about, you know, she's talking about the baby said this, that, and the third. I'm like, go get a rape picture, go get a check. And then that same day I hung up, the, when I hung up the phone, it had some people in the lobby waiting to get me. Mm. And that's when it went on record where, as far as employment, when I go to an employer and, I mean, the conversation could have went great over the phone, my resume, everything checked out, but I had to have that, I had to have that ugly conversation because I didn't want them to know if they discovered it. So I had to say, hey, I had a situation. Ooh. And, you know, and then and here's the paperwork. But, and then, you know, me being a man, you know, a boss or a manager and, and and a manager of people, even if I thought that the guy was innocent, it's just best to, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But then, let's just say, the stigma that goes along with having to tell someone that, who may have a daughter. Right, right. You know, it, it, it was just so ugly, but it was my truth. It was my truth, and I, was, I would much rather put it out there and say, listen, I have nothing to hide, here's my paperwork, and, I, and I've already did my time over something I need to do. I just need work right now. And to be denied that, based off that, it was hell. Now, um, after getting out in 2012, how long did it take you to overcome being bitter? That took a while. 
Yeah, because I'm I, I, naturally so I would be angry because again, it, it went beyond the accusation. It went beyond everything that I thought was even morally possible that another person that supposed love you, I can't use my last name. Like it don't get no deeper than that, you know. And it hurts even more when you know when a person does something to you that you would never think about doing. Correct, correct. correct. But my, my thing will tie down what happened once it was proven that you did anything happen to her? So she can just go and function as if, wow, wow, Don King, only America, huh? Yep. So, but your life is just like, so every day you had to pick your life back up and find the pieces and, you know, and people out here, some people, no matter how much there is truth, they still want to believe a lie. Absolutely. People will tend to believe the lie before they even think about listening to the truth. So after everything dried up in a uh, nine-to-five corporate, you decided to get to act. That's all I had. Well, initially, um, after the accusation was found um, or the, you know was made, yeah, I, I I I I I just left Dallas. I left Dallas, and moved to Houston. But I said, you know what? Well, I want to stay in Texas because just in case I can see my kid or this was to turn around, at least I'm still in the in the state. I'm local. I'm four hours away. Um, when that reality came to be, where that just wasn't going to be. The, uh, uh, an opportunity, an issue, because it was a power control type thing. I just said, look, you got to go someplace to, to survive. And all I had was, like, you, you got the acting and stuff like that. But prior to that, I worked sales jobs. I was a mortgage broker. You know, anything, again, I took whatever I could. I think the last job I had when I was in Texas, Texas, I was a forklift driver. So I, I did it all. And then me coming here was like, listen, yeah, last, resort. Resort. last resort, it's all or nothing. They don't care about your record. Right. I couldn't be judged. It's, it's all what you bring to the table. And God, doggone you brought it. And I brought it. I brought it. And that's, and that's the fabulous thing about it. Because um, now you are storing um, in sisters. And yeah. how has that been? Working with Tyler Perry? Um, the experience, great. The opportunity, well, well deserved. Because I, I did work my butt off to get here. Uh, I love it. But I don't think people like me right now. Well, now, why would you say that? My character. Well, now, tell, tell us a bit about your character. Hmm. Well, I play a guy named Alonzo Crawford. Mm -hmm. He looks like me, you know. He's bald, he got a lot of swag and stuff. But mm -hmm. he's a very complicated gentleman. He got some things going on. And unfortunately, in the, for in the first season, you don't get to see why he, he reacts the way he does. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, people are taking him for face value. And um, it's a very controversial role because it deals with the LGBT community. Is, uh, I had an altercation just last week with one of the, the main cast members, Maurice, and... Now, now Maurice is homosexual? Yes. Okay. He's the homosexual character in the show. Yes. So you, you beat him up? Yes. Oh, of course. Yes. And so when people see you out in the street, they think you really did that. I, I, I've got a few calls. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few emails. I've got a few DMs. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that, that would be the perception. Well, we're going to show you did a fantastic job. Either, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. I am not like that. Because he's not like that. I'm not like that. Job, not at all. Man. But now, um, also, you uh, have body for tour, is that correct? Yeah, I have a company, personal training company, and uh, I do personal chef chefing. I'm a culinary chef by trade. Yeah. So that's that, that, I use my culinary chefing and meal prep, and before all this even blew up, I was ahead of the game mm -hmm. um, to start my personal training company because to look like this is pretty much more nutrition than it is what you do in the gym. Mm -hmm. And most people at that particular time didn't know how to cook their food, didn't know what to put in it to make it taste good. So I had the chef thing, I had the nutrition thing, then I got the weight thing, and I'm like, yo, I can take it from here to here in zero to six in no time. And he's he doing some really big things. Now, lastly, you also are a motivational speaker. Now, is, you, is your situation, because of what happened, has it inspired you to become a motivational speaker? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't think God would do anything for you not to tell nobody else. Correct. I, so, you know, I, I'm the example of what not to do or when it does occur. This is what you should do. So, so for those who are back home now, because um, and we're gonna uh, and Wayne Slap is gonna you know, talk more about it as well. Slappy, yeah, that's, that's that, my man. That, that's the guy right there. I played ball with him one time. He made me still think I had it. Bro. Really? Yeah. You know, Slap is a tough. He's a tough trainer. Yeah. Yeah. He made me do right. This it wasn't no easy nothing. And, bro. And, and the thing about him is that he wanted to make sure you got the footwork. Man, he, look, he, he had me doing all them drills. Look, <laughs> now, I was cold back in the day. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he did, did all, all that, that all that. Yeah, but he coached Kobe. See, I can say whatever y'all want about me. And he and he. Mike, and one thing yeah. that's so awesome about what he does is that when when the 
for professionals to become professionals. Right. They still go see they, them. They, they go see them. So again, regardless of what you think of me, I play for Slappy. Yeah, Wayne Slappy. Yeah, Wayne Slappy. Slappy. And he's gonna be he's gonna be our next guest in a moment. Now, uh, one last thing though. So, what advice though, Ty, would you give young, these young guys out here who are out here, you know, using these women, looking at them like an, as an object, yeah. or putting themselves in these positions, you know, where they're a target? Don't. <laughs> Don't. Uh, respect, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I would hope that you will, that, that you would treat a woman like you want a man to treat your daughter or your mother. Correct. So why would you exemplify that kind of behavior in a relationship? Uh, I would tell them to be careful. Be careful. Everything that look good ain't good for you. You know, get to know a person. You know, don't be so quick to do that, but we live in a culture where it's just that first. Wham, bam. And then we figure it out later, you know. This right here could one, just one. It takes just one. If you've been blessed to go through a few with no problem, all it takes is just one on, to it. totally change your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it every day. It's on the news. You know, if you got a little money again, understand, try to get a, a clear idea of what this woman is trying to get from you. If it's a mutual thing, so be it. Do what wrong folks do, but don't don't be setting yourself up for a fall. Now I said in my first point that if um, if the woman is not interested in you, clearly back away, right? Back away. You, you run, run like David. Exactly. Exactly. I'm running like David. You take off, and then and then the second point, as I was mentioning as well, is that if they're coming on way too strong, that's probably a clear indication that they want to lose something more than what's in the mercy. 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 All right. So so. Um, Ty, man, it's been an honor having you on the show. Oh, this, is, this is man is just doing some big, big things. You've got to check him out. Ty, where can they go and follow you on your own social media? Social media, IG, the official Ty, T-H-A-I Edwards. That's IG. Facebook is Ty the Tiger, Ty the Tiger. And my website, of course, is www.tyedwards.com. And check out this video. You gotta check out this documentary, yeah. uh, Ty Edwards. You gotta check it out. It's yeah. 12 minutes and 29 seconds. It's called Falsely Accused How to Catch a Tiger. Boy, right. I tell you. And then, and believe it or not, the cell is even bigger than he is. Yeah. They didn't believe that they yeah. did. Yeah. 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 Thanks for stopping by the show. Thank you. Thank you, brother. My goodness. Thank now, you. ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we're gonna have the iconic Wayne Slappy right after this.